In this lecture, we are going to learn how we can enable authentication on MongoDB server and we will also create a user with sufficient permission which will allow that user to create new users and define roles for them. Now, in order to enable authentication on MongoDB server, we have two ways. One way is we can go ahead and we can stop the MongoDB service running in the background and then we can start the MongoDB service in foreground using this MongoD command. And when we are going to execute this MongoD command, with that we can also specify this flag hyphen hyphen auth. So what it will do is, it will start the MongoDB service in foreground with authentication enabled. Or what we can do is, we can go ahead and we can modify the MongoD configuration file and there we can add this configuration. There we can set this authorization to enabled and when we do that, it will enable authentication and authorization on the MongoDB server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this second approach where we will add this setting, this configuration in MongoDB config file. For that, let's go to the folder where the MongoDB is installed. So in my PC, I have installed MongoDB server in program files, MongoDB. There you will see two folders, tools and server. Here we need to go to server folder. You will also see the version of the MongoDB installed on my machine. It is 8.0. So with that name, we have a folder. Let's go inside that. And there we have this bin folder. In that bin folder, you will see some of the files. And one of the file is this MongoD configuration file. Now I want to edit this file. And in order to edit this file and save it, we need to open it in administrator mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open notepad and I'm going to open it in administrator mode. And let me try to drag and drop this MongoD file in this notepad. And let's maximize this. And here in the security section, let's go ahead and let's add the configuration. So here we will first say security colon. Let's move to next line. Let's add two spaces and then here let's say authorization and here we are going to set it to enabled. And now all you have to do is you have to save this file for that you can press control S. And the file is now saved. Let's close this. Now what we will also do is we will open services. There, let's search for MongoDB service, which is running in the background. So somewhere we should have our MongoDB service. Okay, here the MongoDB server service is running in the background. I'll simply restart it so that the changes which we have done in the configuration file, it will come into effect. Let's go ahead and let's close this. Now let's open Mongo shell. Here, first I will stop the Mongo shell. So for that, I can press control C. And if I press control C again, the Mongo shell has been stopped. It is no more running. Let me clear the shell here. And let's again start the Mongo shell. So for that, we can simply type Mongo. And if I press enter, it is taking some time in connecting to the MongoDB server. But now it is connected. Let's clear the shell. And now authentication is enabled. Here we do not see any error, but authentication is enabled. And if I go ahead and if I type show DB's command and if I press enter, you see it is not showing us any database. That's because currently no authenticated user is logged in to MongoDB server. Currently I am an anonymous user. And since we have enabled authentication, an anonymous user should not be able to perform any operation on the MongoDB server. That's why when I'm typing show DB's command, it is not showing me any database. If I try to switch to some other database, for example, eShopping, and if I press enter, we have switched to eShopping database. And here, if I say show collections, and if I press enter, you see we are getting an error. And it says not authorized on eShopping to execute command. So basically, since currently I am an anonymous user, I will not have rights to perform any action on this MongoDB server. So now what we are going to do is we are going to create a new user. So currently we have no user created for any database in this MongoDB server. And when that is the case, that means when you have no user in your MongoDB server already created, you are allowed to add one user. 
and this one user which you will add this user should have all the privileges to add more users so here we are going to create a user in the admin database so for that let's switch to admin database this action we can perform and always remember that whenever you will create a user that user will always be associated to a database in this example we are going to create a user who is associated with admin database we are going to create a user in the admin database and to create a user we can use create user method what it will do is it will create a user on the current database so here we need to specify few things we need to specify the user the username i am going to call this user as admin but you can call this user anything okay since this user is going to be an admin user i am calling it as admin and then we also need to specify a password for that for that we have a property pwd and using this property we, we can specify a password for this user and i am going to specify the password as test123 and then we also need to specify roles for this user so for that we are going to have this roles property which is an array and in that array you can specify all the roles for that user to this array you can pass a string value or you can pass an object if i pass a string value in that string i can specify what role i want to assign to this user here we are going to assign a role called user admin any database so this user will have an admin role on any database so this user can create other users in any database this user can manage users and any other admin related things this user can do so in this way we can specify a string value for this roles array or what we can also do is instead of a string value we can specify an object there we can specify the role and there we can also specify for which database we want to assign that role okay so here we can specify the database name but here since i want to create this user in the admin database and there i want to assign a role for this user since we are already in the admin database we can use that short notation where we can simply specify the string value the role as string value so what role do we want to assign here we want to assign user admin any database okay let's go ahead and let's run this command and you will see that that user has been created we have this okay one that means the user has been created so on this admin database if i say db dot get users if i run this method okay i cannot again run this command because in order to get all the users i should be logged in but currently i am not logged in so that's why i am getting this error i need to authenticate so here we have created this user called admin with this password test123 now let's go ahead and let's log in that user so for that let me first clear the shell and in order to log in the user what we can do is on db we have a method called auth to this auth method we need to pass the username which in this case is admin and we need to pass the password which again in this case is test1234 now remember that this admin user we have created for this admin database so if you want to log in this user using this auth method first you need to switch to this admin database then only you can log in that user if i copy this command from here and what i'll do is i will switch to some other database maybe i'll switch to e shopping database and now there if i go ahead and if i try to run this command try to log in this user if i press enter here we have this error authentication field because this user has been created for admin database so when i am calling this auth method to log in this user first i should be in the admin database the database in which i have created that user so let's say use admin now we are in the admin database and let's again run that command so let me go and let me paste it and now when i press enter it again says login failed 
that's because I have specified a wrong password here. So I think it is test one, two, three. If I go ahead and if I press enter, now the user is logged in. Okay. And now if I type show DB's command, now it is showing me all the databases. If I switch to eShopping database, for that I can use use eShopping. And here, if I say show collections, and if I press enter, it says not authorized on eShopping. Now, why do we have this error? We have this error because we have created an admin user who can manage and create new users and perform other admin tasks. But this user does not have rights to perform actions like listing all the collection, reading data from a collection, or writing data to a collection in other databases. Let me also show you one more thing. So what I'll do is I'll switch to admin database and there let's say show collections. If I press enter, you see here also we are getting this error and it says not authorized on admin database to execute command like listing collections because this user is an admin user. He can perform administrative tasks like creating a user, managing a user, etc. But he cannot list the collections or perform CRUD operation on the collection. All right. Now this user, this admin user, we are going to use this user to create new users. Because to this admin user, we have provided an admin role on any database. So this user should be able to create new users in any database. So we are going to use this user in our next lecture to create a new user with some less privileges. But here you need to remember that whenever you are going to log in this user or any user in that matter, you can only log in or log out that user from the database in which you have created that user. This admin user, we have created it in the admin database. So whenever we want to log in this user, first we must switch to that database in which that user is created. Also, if we want to log out that user, first we must switch to that database in which that user has been created. From that database only, we can log in or log out that user. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.